This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And I tell you what, we have some great programs coming up, and this is one of them. Because the markets are in turmoil. Everything is shifting. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to get wiped out. So this is another very important program. Fantastic program. So uh, our guest today, oh, Kim would have been here, but she's, she's doing her favorite thing. She's moving money around right now. So she likes doing that. But anyway, our guest today, this is about the greatest bubble. And for those of you with a 401k or hoping for retirement or planning on uh, playing golf for the rest of your life, you better pay attention. Because I think, and a lot of other people think, and our guests think, the biggest stock market crash is on us now. And I'm going to remind you of one thing. And Rhea, which dad don't sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or ETF. We don't make recommendations. We're just purely educational. So all views mentioned on this program are for you to digest on your own because we don't make recommendations. So our guest today is an old friend, Harry. He's not old, but been a longtime friend. I followed him for years. He is one of the most, he is he is one of the greatest forecasters I've ever met, and he is, I remember he was the first guy to interview introduce me when I was studying coming up to demography, and he called it demography is destiny. When you look at demographics, you can see the future. So right now, when you look at the future, the baby boomers are old guys. You know, they've had these, you know, they're the first generation, I think, to have a 401k because we came off what's called defined benefit pension plan and went to a defined contribution, which is the 401k or IRA or SEPs. So the baby boomers for the, the first generation <clears throat> to be hanging with their butt out in the air right now. And if the market crashes, they're gone. Whereas my parents' generation, the World War II generation, they had a defined benefit pension plan. That's like what Ford still gives out, I think. So if the market crashed, Ford still made sure you got a paycheck for life. So the baby boomers, you're screwed. Listen to this program now. And if you're the kid or child or grandkid of a baby boomer, you better listen up too because you don't want grandpa and grandma moving in with you when they get wiped out in this next crash. So that's Harry Dent. And our other guest here is a man I just met. He's a Navy pilot, incredible pilot, Stan Harley. He publishes the Harley Market Letter. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm gushing about Stan is because he flew for Top Gun and all that. He knows Tom Cruise, per no, he doesn't. <laughs> and he's a Navy pilot, and I flew for the Marine Corps, so there's this. Uh, and he flew out of uh, Miramar, outside of San Diego, and we used to go to the same bar and fight each other. But anyway, so it's, it's really... Um, and the brothers right now. So welcome to the program. So I'll let Harry, you know, Harry and I just came back from a fantastic tour all the way through Australia. That was fantastic. I love the Aussies. So Harry, welcome to the program. And uh, what do you want to say about this bubble coming up? Well, you know, you know, Robert, um, I love Australia too. They're, yeah. they're the oh, best God. audience in the world. They're, they're the most hungry for new information I've found in the world. And they have fewer experts like you and I to listen to there. They're in the middle of nowhere. I hate to say it. Um, so, so I love the Australians. They, when my problem, Robert with Australians is they, they have the biggest real estate bubble in the world, except for China and they don't get it. They think, Oh, our real estate's gone up forever and we're good people and we deserve this bubble. And so I always have to wake them up and say, Hey, greater the bubble greater the burst. That's, that's, that's my number one statement from everything I've studied in demographics and cycles. The greater the bubble, the greater the burst. Well, the so problem is, Harry, is what their problem and, is they've had, had a recession in 35 years. So yeah. after, after you left, my friends had to go on suicide watch. There was, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you know, it's just natural, Robert, yeah. that, that when things go good, people just think, Oh, it's okay. It's not okay for you to be sitting in your house going up 20, 25% a year and the stock market going up 20, 30% a year while you do nothing. That is something for nothing. That's what's called a bubble. So we're in this bubble. And the, the key thing 
I have been looking now for two years for the NASDAQ, the leading stock bubble, to get up above 11,000. That's what I mean. That, that's, that was my target for the bubble to peak. And it has done that. It has done that more than that. And, and it's, it's been hitting that in recent weeks. And, of course, at the same time, I'm looking for this, Stan Harley, who is the best short-term forecaster in markets, says the same thing, like mid-August is looking like a peak. So I, I think people really need to wake up here. I know it's hard because the bubble keeps going up and, and it seems like it can do no wrong. No, this bubble is peaking here. Uh, this is the best I've seen. I've also been looking for the NASDAQ to make new highs and the S&P 500 and broader markets to only retest their highs in this really stupid bubble. Got I mean, for the, for the stocks to be going to new highs in the greatest depression downturn with the COVID-19 in history, okay, wake up. Got this is an alarm. Get okay. the hell out of the stock market. Right. So I've, I've had the pleasure of, I'm, I'm glad you invited Stan because he's a, you have a tremendous respect for other pilots and he flew the F4, F14, and F18. And uh, I was a helicopter pilot. So we're kind of different breed of cat. But anyway, uh, we, we kind of see the world from the same point of view. And I don't know if Stan's ever crashed, but I've crashed three times. And so for those of you who are 401k, it doesn't feel good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> the, the rush going down, I mean, you go, you go down a lot faster than it comes up. So Stan, as a fellow pilot, welcome to the program. And uh, give us a little background about your flying background. Because everybody knows about Harry and his forecasting. But I was, I was respect of the pilots. Honor, delighted to be here. Thank you for your service uh, to our country. Uh, fortunately, all of my landings equal my takeoffs. Uh, <laughs> ne never need to pull that ejection handle. <clears throat> Had a few close calls. They're still charging me for the three aircraft I lost. <laughs> I think uh, I think Harry makes some good points about the market. I'm I'm a market technician. I look at a variety of fundamental, quantitative, and technical factors. Primary technical analysis with an emphasis on market cycles. Um, but I, I I've looked at several things uh, and I. I'll highlight a few of them here. First of all, unemployment. Uh, that's, uh, that's some data that uh, all of us can, can download from the FRED website. I've looked at that data all the way back to the mid 1940s since uh, its origination. And what what's, what's I would you explain what the, the, the FRED website is, please? That's a, uh, a website that is maintained by the US government, the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And anyone can go on, just type in Google, it pops right up. And there is just a plethora of data there that uh, has to do with uh, equity prices, home prices, interest rates, that's, that's uh, maintained by the U.S. government. It's, uh, and it's totally free. Anyone I, can thought Fred, I thought Fred was connected to the Fed, it's not? It is. Uh, it, it is. But uh, they, they, maintain, uh, they, they maintain the website for um, home prices, equity prices, bond prices, and uh, the BLS supplies the data for unemployment. So that's, so kind, of your crystal, there. that's kind of your crystal ball is what you're saying, is that? It is, and one can download it, dump it to a spreadsheet and analyze it, and I find that unemployment goes up and down on a cyclical basis, and uh, what I have found is that, as a general rule, uh, the best levels in unemployment for the then current economic cycle tend to precede stock market tops by five to seven months on average. Um, so that is to say when, when unemployment gets to its lowest level, then you punch the stop clock and approximately five to seven months later, the stock market reaches its high for the then current cycle. And that works very, very well. So, so that kind of fits your, your way of looking at things, Harry, because you look at the trends. But so what you're saying when unemployment, when Trump was saying unemployment is an all time low, mm -hmm. In your mind, you're saying it's going to bust. That, that's oh. what I'm, I'm saying, yes, is the stock market hits a peak. Unemployment reached about 3.4%. Going from memory here, but I believe, I believe it hit a right. level of 3.4, which is very low historically in the post-World War II era. Um, that occurred in February of this year. So 
historically, if we had five to seven months to that February level, that would suggest about now for a stock market peak, plus or minus. And, and now is August 2020. Just so people August 2020. Then I look at uh, I look at other things. I look at market cycles. I look at divergences among the various indices. Um, we we have a a cycle that averages just under seven years. And I know Harry's familiar with this as well. Yeah. We can talk about it. it's eighty two months, eighty two point two, from a re- regression analysis. You call it seven years. The market has a propensity to make significant troughs about every seven years. Robert, the last one occurred in February of twenty sixteen. Seven years prior to that, March of 09. Seven years prior to that, October of 02, and so on. Uh, going forward in time, the analysis points to December 2022 for the next low in that cycle. And the standard deviation on that's about four months. So we should be looking to the latter part of December 2022, early part of 2023 for the next trough in that seven year cycle. Of course, before you make a low, you have to make a high. And the highs in that cycle tend to occur between two and three years prior to the low. So back of the envelope math, if we're going to make a low in December 2022, back it up two to three years, let's use two and a half as as, as an easy average. That points to right now, summer of 2020 for a high. So we are essentially there just from back of the envelope math. Uh, And Harry, how, how does it fit with your demographic or your way of forecasting? Okay, okay, Robert, number one, my demographic cycles peaked in late 2007 for the baby boom spending cycle, which I said back in the mid 1980s. Now, but there's a bigger cycle, which um, Stan and I both agree on. This is rare for a short term guy like Stan and Mike and me to be looking at a 90 year cycle. If you look at the stock market, since the stock exchanges were established in the late 1700s, back 250 years, okay? The greatest cycle evident in the stock market is every 90 years you get a super bubble peak, like 1837, then the crash into 1842, and then 1929 to 32. And now I was calling for late 2019 to late 2022, exactly what Stan's saying in for the bottom. This is the biggest thing that happens, and it's because of technology cycles that, that come together every 45 years and then more so every 90 years. This is wait, wait, Harry, ma- Harry, Harry, mess up you real quickly. So 90 years from 2020 is 1930? 90 year cycle that peaked in late 29, bottom in late 32, 90 years later, late 2019, just give it a few months, um, early uh, 2020, February. This is the biggest cycle we will see in our lifetimes. I've been saying this for decades. You, you have been. You, you have been. You've been having warning. You've warned a lot of people about the 90-year cycle. So yeah. that's today from the Great yeah. Depression. So let me ask uh, Stan, what do, you, what do you say about that, Stan? I agree with, uh, with Harry on that one. I've, I've got data going back to the 1600s, um, and I, I don't want to get too technical with, uh, with uh, numerology, uh, but there are a number of Fibonacci relationships, I'll, 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 I'll leave it with that, that all cluster in the present time frame going all the way back to the 1600s, including the peaks in 1835, 1929, 1720, uh, which preceded that, and even the, uh, the tulip mania of 1637 in, in the Netherlands. Projecting forward, putting them into a, a regression modeling, which I've done, all coincides with, with the 2020 time period for a major peak, and we're essentially there. So now that's the macro, that's the big picture, and then trying to narrow this down a little bit more, I look at the seven-year cycle. Um, we have some divergences right now in the advanced decline data, which is something that I track very closely. Yeah. We have the advanced decline line, which is a summation of each day's net difference between advancing issues and declining issues. Market technicians keep track of this. You, uh, you, lost, you lost me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, the advanced decline line is making a new high. And a lot of technicians will point that out. And they draw the conclusion that, well, with the AD line making a new high, therefore the Dow, the S&P, and everything should follow. Okay, okay, and okay. Say, we, we, have, we have to go to a break. So here we are. 
All right. You guys, you guys are watching these waves or cycles, and Harry's been warning about this one for a long time, the 90-year cycle. So if it was 1929, let's call it 1930, 1990 years is 2020. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the question is how big and what should we do? So when we come back, we'll be talking to these gentlemen, especially for those of you with a 401k or have a pension you're counting on. This may be the most important two men you can listen to in the history of your life. We'll be right back. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anywhere on iTunes, Android, or YouTube. And please leave us a comment what you think of the program. When you listen, all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them for one reason. It's because we're only educational and informational. We make no recommendations, although some of our guests may make rec recommendations. But it's up to you to make up your own mind. But most importantly, if you listen to this program again, repetition, you'll learn twice as much from these great, these great uh, teachers today. But also include your friends, family, and business partners, and then discuss it, and you'll learn so much more than you did if you read a book. So our guest today is a great friend, a you know, person I look up to for years, is Harry Dent. I've been following his message. He's very accurate in his forecast. He's very accurate. He called the great boom ahead, and now he's calling the great crash ahead. And, and another gentleman I just met is Stan Harley. He's a fellow pilot. You know, he flew out of San Diego, Miramar. Top Gun, and uh, he flew the F-4, F-14, and F-18, and I flew a little gunship. But anyway, that's all. This is a wonderful, wonderful brotherhood. So Harry and Stan are talking about what they see, and then again, it was it was um, Harry who educated me about this 90-year cycle. So let's go back to 1930, 1929, and today is 20. 20. We're in a 90-year cycle. And so they're both short-term and long-term. And the reason Stan and Harry are together today is Stan is more very, very micro, short-term. And so we're going to hear their points of view. This is especially important because what they're predicting is, I think, the biggest. we're in the biggest bubble in history. Harry, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I do, Robert. I mean, uh, I only have a few short-term newsletters that, that, that I track, and Stan is, is number one of two of those because um, he's a cycle guy like me. He focuses more on the short-term, but he was the first guy of all the newsletters I've gotten to also recognize this 90 year cycle, the biggest cycle of all times. If you look at the stock market, Except 250 years back, there's only one cycle that stands out. Super bubble peaks every 90 years. And, and so Stan is a short-term guy normally, but he also gets the long-term cycle. So we both agree. That it, it is so rare that somebody like me, long-term with demographic cycles, and now this 90-year cycle – would say this is this is not just a peak in the stock market. It's the greatest peak of your lifetime and the greatest crash and, and, and the sale of a lifetime on on assets ahead. So, this Wait, is so, let, so let, let, let's stand and stand. What what do you want to say? The, the, the only reason we're we're, we're pilots, we're open minded. That's the biggest difference, right, Stan? We are open minded. We yes. are. Uh, from a, uh, a technical perspective, uh, Robert. Um, I look for divergences in a topping evolution. Bottoms in the stock market tend to be one and done, V events, sometimes it's a retest. Uh, tops, however, tend to be protracted affairs that span several months, sometimes years. But in the context of that uh, seven year cycle that I was talking about a little while ago, uh, the tops tend to span several months. So early on in the topping phase, we see the largest number of stocks making new highs and in indices. And then over a period of several months, we will see Fewer and fewer stocks, fewer and fewer of the benchmark indices making new highs. Okay, so once again, this is August 2020 because right. what we're talking about is short term now. Yes. Okay. And over the last several months, we've seen the Dow Transports go to a new high. That was back in 2018. In January of this year, we saw the New York Composite go to a new high. 
In February, we saw the Dow and the S&P. And now the only major index making a new all-time high is the NASDAQ composite. Yeah. And this is very, very typical of how tops are formed. You get a thinning in the advance as the, as the topping structure evolves. It is possible the S&P may kiss a new high here in the next day or so. We're so close. I think when this thing is, is done, I think, and you hold the chart back in your face, it'll look like a double top in the S&P 500. But I think the, the Dow Transports has seen their high for the cycle. I think the New York Composite, which is the most important index of all, has seen its high. The Dow Industrials. And now we're down to the, uh, the S&P and the NAS. Um, so wait, 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 for those who don't speak technical language, a double top is like your two strikes. Yes. And then three strikes, you're out. So mm-hmm. this, is, this is my question. I want to ask both of you. I, I don't know. And historically, I've never seen so much money printed in such a short time. And we're, 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 we're laughing about our friend Peter Schiff. You know, he has this different, we all have different points of view. And Peter is calling for inflation and Harry is calling for de- deflation. What's the difference? You know, like Peter's a, Schiff's a great friend of ours, but we see it different. We see the same scenario, the same event differently. So Harry, what does, P- why is Peter as blind as a bat? <laughs> oh, Robert. Let me give you a figure that's very important. $473 trillion, six times the GDP of the world. That's how much financial assets there are, and it's more than double than it was at the peak of of those financial assets in 2007, 2008, before the last bubble peak. What, What governments did around the world was when we had this great downturn, the next great depression, like 2008, 2009, like 1930, 31, they just printed money to erase it. That is the worst thing I've ever seen in history. I I am gonna go down, Robert, saying these central bankers are the stupidest people in all of history and will go down as that only in retrospect because they think you can make things go away by printing money. So, got, 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 got. so let's okay. So, okay. So Peter Schiff says, Oh, this has got to cause inflation. No, they are fighting. They are offsetting deflation of financial assets. 477 trillion, six times GDP. They're fighting that. This is a deflationary era. So this is Not 1929 no again. We're going to get inflation here. No yeah, way. So this is 19. So well, inflation will mean food prices go up, car prices go up and all that. What you're saying is we're going oh, to oh, deep- That's nothing, Robert. I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. It's so much bigger than consumer inflation. I understand. I, 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 I understand. But that's where the, most of the minds are at. You know, well, eggs cost me more money. Yeah. You know, but, but you're talking, you're talking about a major, 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 major depression. Stan quick. What do, what do you think on that? I, I agree with Harry. I think we are making a 1929 style top an 1835 top 1720. All of those, the three that preceded this one, I think this is on the scale of that one. Okay, so this is my question then, please, to both of you. How does printing so much money? Because I don't think they printed this much money in 19, the way they might have, but I don't know if they've ever printed so much money. So how does that affect the crash? They are printing so much money to offset the decline in financial Just this recent crash in stocks in February to March took out $25 trillion globally in just stocks, not counting real estate and other financial assets. The, the, the governments are having to print more and more money to offset this bubble crash in financial assets, which they have created. This is totally artificial. This whole boom since 2009 has seen the lowest growth in GDP in any recovery ever. And the greatest <laughs> increase in stocks and financial assets ever, something's wrong here. It's called printing money to offset a downturn. Okay, Stan, what do you want to say? I think we are very close to rolling over here and heading south. But to Harry's point, uh, the government has borrowed a lot of money, pumped it into the economy. And I believe this is an artificial economy right now. It's not consumer driven. It's being driven with borrowed government money. So Harry, is, is that what you're calling gold to drop below a thousand or something? Okay, Robert. I'm you know, Peter Schiff wants to kill you right now. I don't gold. That. gold has held up better than any other commodity, which is its index, the CRB, 
um, in history in this downturn because gold has a crisis value. But gold is an, uh, an inflation hedge, and we're talking, that's the difference between me and Peter Schiff. Deflation is the end result instead of inflation. Got it. I see gold going back to the low in late 2015 of 1,050, maybe a little lower, and it still would be the best <laughs> commodity of all to hold up. And, and, and then I see a huge rally long-term for one reason, the biggest growth in the future demographics, which is my expertise, is Asia. Asians love gold. Chinese, Indians buy more gold than anybody in the world. Gold will lead the next commodity rally, but gold is an inflation hedge, not a deflation hedge, and it will go down. I do actually think now, Robert, that gold has broken 2,000. It's or a little. It's past high. It'll go maybe to 2,200. Uh, but gold is going to go down. Gold is not your safe haven. The crash um, in, in February, March showed you gold went up at first and then went down. Right. And then the bigger crash in 2008, gold went running for mommy when deflation set in. Gold is not your safe haven here. Uh, now, once it goes down to 1,000, <laughs> I would load up the trucks. Stan, comments. I mean, even if you're not, I, I don't know if you're in the gold market at all, but this is a war between Harry and Peter Schiff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, I have a positive outlook on the metals complex. I think gold is going to go substantially higher and it's so, pulling the young yeah, but This, this is my real question. Okay. Both uh, of you. Will the fed do the same thing in the next crash? Will they just print more or are they going to actually find religion and say, we better cut this out? Robert, I don't know whether the, the, the borrowed money mentality will continue, uh, particularly after the election. Uh, I think uh, the current administration and indeed the other side of the aisle uh, wants to pump borrowed money into this economy. And it's going to work until interest rates rise. And my work says interest rates are going to remain low for about another two years. Once they turn the corner, uh, then that's going to make the situation extremely problematic. That is to say, we're going to have this huge debt we're going to have to service. And when interest rates start spiking, when they go from one and a half to three to four to five, um, the U.S. government is going to have a hard time servicing the debt, which means we'll have to slash spending. When the government slashes spending, that means fewer jobs, and it snowballs. Okay. Um, depression. I, I think we're going into a protracted depression. On that, Harry and I are, are spot on. Okay. Um, I think that from a technical analysis perspective, the top that I see us making right now is analogous to 29, 1835, and 1720. Okay. Uh, and I think there's some, some hard times uh, coming in, in the not too distant future. Harry, can you hear us? Yeah. Hey, Robert, I got a, the same figure for you. $473 trillion in financial assets blown up more than double in just the last decade. And people are thinking that $5 trillion or $20 trillion could offset that. No way. The governments are going to lose this war. They are printing money to offset a deflationary spiral, and they will lose this battle, or I will be a professor at the University of Texas in Austin two years oh from now. In oh, God. oh, God. Oh, God, please don't do that. Again. But anyway, so we've we got we to gotta start winding up. <clears throat> again, once again, we don't give financial advice. We don't tell you what to buy or sell. Of course the whole thing about the Rich Dad Show, we want to listen to both sides, and that's why I'm glad – you know, Stan and I are the voices of reason here between Peter Schiff and Harry Dent. <laughs> but anyway, so Stan, your your newsletter is harleymarketletter.com, H-A-R-L-E-Y marketletter.com. What advice would you have for mom and pop with a 401k IRA or somebody counting on their government pension in the stock market? Listen to people like Harry and, and others on your show. Keep abreast of all the information out there. Uh, and at the end of the day, make your best decision in terms of, of being careful with the information you're hearing today. I would suggest that investors use some type of trailing stock, uh, whether they put it in with their financial advisor or they put it in themselves or they just keep it mentally, but essentially set a floor. So if the market does roll over, 
then get out and go to cash. A stop means if it if it's at ten dollars, it goes to eight. You're out. You're out. Yes. A stop is at eight. If we do go into a decline, I don't think it's going to be a modest decline. I think it's going to be a significant decline. And at least by taking taking themselves out, they're going to avoid that. On the other hand, let's assume Harry and Stan are wrong. The market just keeps going straight up. Well, at least they're still invested from the long term. But would you exp- would you uh, want them to go to cash at this time? I would put a trailing stop underneath the market, maybe 5%, maybe 10%. I don't want to define that. I want to leave that to everyone's own personal risk tolerance. If the market heads south, it will take them out. Okay. And if it continues northbound, then they can enjoy the ride on more borrowed money from the government. Okay. So, and, and then Harry... <coughs> Harry's website is harrydebt.com. He and I will be on our way to Mary Mary England to spread the good tidings and joy. And uh, Harry, what, what's it, what advice do you have for mom and pop with a 401k or they're counting on the government pension? You know, I would say the same thing. Things have gone in one direction. Uh, all financial assets up, but there has been one financial asset, the 30 year, 20, 10 and 30 year treasury bond that went up even in this crash in, in February to March. That's the safe haven. Everybody says it's gold. No, it's it's gold long term, but not short term. The Treasury bonds and the US dollar is the safe haven for the world. It went up. And 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 so even if you say, oh, maybe Stan and Harry are wrong here and stocks gonna keep going up, well, you know, Treasury bonds have kept going up in value in this bubble. It's the one safe haven and you've got to get out of stocks and you've got to get out of, of expensive, I call it expensive real estate. Real estate is also in a bubble because of record low mortgage rates, which governments have created. And, and when this gets over, that'll be a different thing. So I say get out of, of, of the risky assets, stocks and real estate and get into the safest not investment grade bonds, even investment grade bonds went down in, in, in February, March. Get into high quality, long-term treasury bonds. They're the safe haven. You not only are in cash in the US dollars versus other currencies, you're in the safe haven, which has been proven like in 2008. Good, thank you very much. So I want to thank both you gentlemen. Once again, uh, we recommend you listen to this program again. Uh, Harry's website is harrydent.com. We're on our way to Jolly England and we'll be talking more. But, you know, as you can tell, things are changing so rapidly. Everybody has a different point of view. and That's why we thank you for your strong points of view. So we come back, we'll be going into a summary. But first of all, once again, it's Harry Dent, harrydent.com and Harley, H-A-R-L-E-Y, marketletter.com. Thank you, gentlemen, for your strong points of view. And Harry, I will send Peter Schiff your regards. Thank you. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Michelle Radio Show, the the good news and bad news about the crash that's coming. I want to thank very, you know, sincere thank you to Harry Dent, longtime friend. And uh, he's always got a point of view. And he's been fairly accurate, you know, on demographics especially. And then Stan Harley, um, the Harley Market Letter. Please subscribe to it. It's two hundred ninety-five dollars. It's a bargain. Uh, I, I really enjoy what he's saying. He's more short-term, and Harry's long-term. And uh, Harry is HarryDent.com. On August thirty, he's having a Harry Dent Summit, and it's very important everybody listen to it because he's going to be giving more of his points of view. I think this time he's going to be in Australia, but Australia is like the rest of the world. He's going to be talking about real estate and the stock market and gold and silver. I think the most important thing I want to talk about to mention right now is Peter Schiff is a friend of myself and Harry. They both live in Puerto Rico. Peter is calling for inflation and Harry is calling for deflation. And the reason Rich Dad stays in between, good news and bad news, we leave it up to you to either do your further research or make up your own mind. But both guys are frightening. I mean, I mean, three of them. You got, you got Stan, Harry, and Peter. <clears throat> something's coming. They're, they're not saying nothing's coming. They're saying something is coming. And the question is, what are you going to do? Any comments, Sarah? Well, I, th- I think you're... 
having the different perspectives of between Harry and Stan and Schiff and Schiff. Stan said something in the show where he said, do this, but that's what I would do. You have to do what's right with your risk Correct. factor. And I think that's what we're trying to do here right. is presenting these different scenarios. How you plan and execute is what's best for you. Correct. I think what, uh, if, he, if you're in the stock market, what Stan says, you might, might put a stop in. Now, that's beyond my meager helicopter brain, but he's a jet pilot. <laughs> well, anyway, what a stop does, let's say the stock is at 10, and you may want to put a stop at 8. So if it drops from 10 to 8, it, it's called a stop out. You, you, you sell at 8. And the only danger on that, if it's a severe crash, it could go right past it. But that's outside shot. I think the biggest thing to listen to was their 90-year trend, because I've heard that from Harry for a long time. Yeah. And it seems to be coming true. But how about that unemployment thing where he says the lowest unemployment meant it was going to go up? Yeah, that it's it's interesting to see. To you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it they're right on. Their numbers yeah. are right on. And we had Harry on, I think, in March. You can listen to that episode by visiting YouTube or richdadradio.com. He said the same thing that like it's so strange that it, not strange. It's coming true. So you know, their research is legitimate and valid and the fact and the unemployment number that stan mentioned it's great five to seven months after it's all time low stock market's at its all-time high look where we are and he said i don't know if we were recording it or right before the show we're in the middle of a pandemic and, and then stan said another word we're in a double top yeah. you see that's kind of a short-term market guy so that's why i would su suggest you subscribe to his newsletter HarleyMarketLetter.com, 295 bucks. It could make you money, but more importantly, save you a lot of money. Right. Because all we are is an education company, and that's why we want you to be able to be more educated so you can make up your own mind. But these are spooky times. Nobody's saying nothing is coming. Everybody's saying something is coming. What happens depends upon who's saying what. So Chef is saying gold is going to go up, Records is saying gold is going to go up and Harry Dent says it's going to go down. The question is, what are you going to do? With that, that's what the Rich Dad Radio Program is about. We're glad you pay attention. Thank you for listening to what we have to say. I'm going to put myself on suicide watch right now. <coughs> but anyway, thank you, Sarah. And thanks for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Program. That was great, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, well balanced. Where you, where you, where you at now, Harry? Puerto Rico. Jesus, low real estate the costs, um, very low taxes. I'm telling you, you guys should both be here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we don't pay taxes, so it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're okay in that case. Uh, do, you, are you, do you hang out with Chef and Maloney and those guys? I do. Peter's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's, we're all friends. But, but yes, he and and uh, John Malden and um, a couple other newsletter writers are down here for the same reasons I am. Yeah. I just discovered Puerto Rico before them. Oh, I discovered good. an island called Calabra. That's why I'm down here, not Puerto Rico. Okay. Did that's you get good. hit by the hurricane a couple of years ago? Yeah, yeah, we got we got whacked big time. Well, I, I had to hold my windows from blowing out physically, and I could not walk for five days because my muscles were so sore from that. Oh, geez. Well, you know what's funny? I just interviewed Peter Schiff, and he was in Connecticut when the last hurricane hit him. I said, you know, I'm going to stay far away from you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> The hurricanes always ch chase them around the world. <laughs> Peter believes in hyperinflation, and I'm like, Peter, we've printed $25 trillion now globally, and you have no inflation, so wake the f*** up. <laughs> wake up, Peter. No hyperinflation. We're in a deflationary. Sorry. Okay, we're going to include all of this, if that's okay with you guys. This is good, huh, Sarah? Yeah. Sure. Unedited. <laughs> oh, this is good. I mean, this yeah, it's enter we're entertainers here today. Entertainers. <laughs> as long as we get the message across.